All right, thank you for joining us for Staying Alert with Christian Overcomers. A massive 8.9 magnitude earthquake hit Japan earlier this morning, causing great destruction. It was the largest earthquake Japan has ever experienced, and it was the fifth largest in the world since 1900. What does this mean? Could it be a sign of things to come? Well, we'll talk about that when we return, but please listen for a brief moment as we share something with you. The enemies of Christianity and freedom are moving against us like never before to control everything we do. And they're not only after political control, they're after your soul as well. So find out the things you need to know to overcome them by ordering Victory Over Evil on DVD. In this special biblical documentary, you will find out what 666 actually means. You'll learn about Satan's trinity and how it operates. You'll discover the meaning of the six-pointed star. You'll see how 666 was originally written. You'll learn about the secret force behind the new world order we're seeing arising today, as well as many, many more vital things that you need to know if you want to be an overcomer who attains victory over evil. So order online today at www.christianovercomers.com. You know, faith and love alone won't get you through this battle. You must know your enemy in order to be a Christian overcomer. Hey Ben, it's good to be back with you again. You too. In the introduction, you alluded to the fact that this earthquake may be a sign of things to come. Mm -hmm. What is your biblical basis for this statement? Well, when asked by his disciples, um, Christ said in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, that earthquakes would be one of the signs to look for concerning the end times. Um, I think we should go and look at one of those places. You could go to any one of them on your own if you want, uh, on your own time. But we'll go to Mark 13, verse 8. And Christ says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places or in many different places. And we're kind of, we've been kind of seeing that happen um, as of late. It seems to be increasing. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Or these are the beginning of, beginnings of the birth pangs, mm -hmm. uh, the beginnings of the tribulation. So I guess to answer your question, if Christ tells us that these are things to look for, um, then I think we should pay attention. All right. So some would say, though, how can earthquakes be a sign of the times when they've been happening, as far as we know, all the way throughout history? Yeah, I guess, uh, I think Luke 21, I think it's uh, verse 11, will give us the answer to that. Is that, I don't think these are what Christ is talking about, what Christ is talking about here. I don't think he's talking about just any old earthquake. Mm -hmm. Um in fact, in Luke 21, verse 11, it specifies that there shall be, uh, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Okay. So I guess then you'd have to define, you know, what is great. Is it uh, 8.0 on the Richter scale? Is it 9? Or, you know, it would it be 10 or above? Right. Um, I guess then you'd have to go that route. But um, other things that... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, in the in the introduction, you also mentioned that there was a tsunami, and there's a lot of tsunami mm -hmm. watches uh, even in our country. But That's other, right. you know, I think I heard there's a ton of countries out there that have watches right now. Mm -hmm. And if you in Luke chapter 21, if you go down to verse 25, it also says, "And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, so civil unrest mm -hmm. with perplexity." And it also says the sea and the waves roaring. That's which, interesting. To me, it would seem to be tsunamis. Yeah. So, and we've had a couple of them in the last few years. But. Absolutely. I would agree with that. And um, also just to draw from that a little bit more, these earthquakes we're seeing are kind of happening in conjunction with uh, the civil unrest among nations. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of that today, as well as many of the nations on the verge of bankruptcy and financial trouble. Right. So it just seems that, this is all part of one big, uh, big group of events that that Christ told us to look for. Right. You, know? you mentioned birth pangs. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain a little bit what you mean by birth pangs? Well, birth pang is, uh, I guess, is exactly what the word says. Uh, so, well, actually, the word is sorrows in the English, but in the Greek, it means birth pangs. Mm -hmm. um, from Luke twenty-one verse uh, eleven, 
Um, actually, it was... Uh, it was from Mark 13. Mark 13. Where you said it. But, yep. Yeah, Mark 13, verse 8. The word there uh, is uh, in the Greek is birth pangs, and it um, signifies the beginning of the tribulation mm -hmm. because the tribulation is kind of described there by Christ as the birth of a child. Right. And it starts out, you know, the birth pangs start out slow. You know, in a natural childbirth, they mm -hmm. start out slow, and they, then they increase with intensity right. until the very end, and then the birth is the birth is there, and then you're happy. Kind of signifies all the way through the tribulation to the end, it gets more painful. And then we're then Christ returns and we're in the the uh, millennial age mm -hmm. and things are you know they're better they're full of joy right which seems to kind of be happening today it seems mm -hmm. like things keep happening closer together and faster mm -hmm. and harder and mm -hmm. it's getting a little bit more intense it seems like yeah and I'm glad you brought that up you could almost like Christ uh, said that these earthquakes were kind of the beginnings of the uh, sorrows. Mm -hmm. You kind of think of it as, you know, the mother is kind of, you know, it's kind of a convulsion or a shaking within her body. Right. It almost kind of seems that the the earth is kind of a, uh, you know, an example of that or a type of that. But worldwide, like a birth pang would be that, that shock, mm -hmm. that shock and awe of the earth going rather than the mother's contractions. Right. So it's kind of like the, uh, <clears throat> the earth is getting ready to birth a child right. in a sense. Interesting. Which would be the return of Jesus Christ. We know uh, from Bible prophecy. Right. You know, the other thing I heard, too, um, you know, it's been all over the news, but you mentioned that this is the fifth largest earthquake that we've had since 1900. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's also the seventh largest earthquake that has ever been recorded mm -hmm. all throughout history. But mm -hmm. obviously going back, I don't know if they could track the, the actual magnitude, but I just thought mm -hmm. that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess to get... a uh, like I mentioned before is, you know, when Christ mentioned that there would be great earthquakes, well, how do we define great mm -hmm. on the Richter scale? Right. That, that's what we use now. Well, to give you some perspective, uh, well, on May 22nd, 1960, um, in Chile, there was an earthquake uh, measured at 9.5 on the Richter mm -hmm. scale, and that was said to be the largest recorded earthquake ever in the history of the world. Right. But that doesn't mean it's the largest that has ever occurred. It's just the only the largest we've recorded, according to the Richter scale. But to get some perspective to this, a an earthquake measuring 10 on the Richter scale would measure 31.6 times um, more powerful as an earthquake that measured 9.0. Wow! So that kind of lets you know that each point on the Richter scale is a pretty pretty significant change. Pretty emphatic. Yeah, and and um. I was doing some research on this, and they're saying that to get an earthquake of 10.0 or greater would most likely happen as a result of a uh, a large um, meteor mm. or an asteroid hitting the Earth. And when we read in Luke 21, um, I believe it was verse 25 there, when he mentioned, uh, he, he kind of went back and mentioned these signs that we should be looking for. He said we'd see signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, mm -hmm. the sea and the raves roar, uh, roaring. And then in verse 26, he says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. But I guess uh, what I really want to do is go back to um, the prior verse here, um, verse 11, where after he mentions the great earthquakes, he mentions that there would be fearful sights mm. and great signs from heaven. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, you know, that could be uh, your large meteors or asteroids as well. Right. And uh, we know from the book of Revelation, there is a great earthquake that actually announces the uh, seven trumpets. Right. And after those seven, when those seven trumpets begin to blow, you, I think you're seeing some of these heavenly bodies falling from the heavens, or you could call it, space, whatever you right. want to call it, to the earth may be causing some of these great earthquakes. I, you know, I guess, um, I guess I can't say for sure whether or not this earthquake in Japan is one of the specific earthquakes that Christ said we should be looking for, right. although I think we should pay attention, um, you know, whenever we see earthquakes this large, but it may be that he's talking about the ones mentioned in the book of Revelation because there's a bunch of them mentioned there as well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, how do you know which ones are you're supposed to be paying attention to, or is it all of them? You just mentioned Chile had mm -hmm. a big one in the year 1960, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a big earthquake in Chile a week ago, mm -hmm. and 
actually there's been a actually the one that happened in Chile is kind of fascinating you can look this up on yeah. on your own time but the town where that earthquake happened is kind of uh, interesting and then there was also another interesting one that happened over in New Zealand recently mm. within the last couple of weeks in the town where that one took place yeah. the name of the town is kind of fascinating but they're happening all over the world I know even in our own country uh, Arkansas, for instance, I think yeah. they've had like 500 or 600 earthquakes just since September alone. Hmm. And just recently, they just had their biggest earthquake. I think that, that out of that um, number of earthquakes, at least recently, that they've had as well. Yeah. So they're happening all over the world. And I, I guess going back to um, the other events that were mentioned is that we're seeing many of these other events that mm -hmm. Christ mentioned in these chapters right. happening, starting to happen today. So... These earthquakes, like I, I guess you would have to say, they probably are these signs that Christ told us to look right. for. And, these birth pangs, and it's all simultaneous. It's they're all kind of happening at the same time. So yeah, interesting. So oh, I was going to say too is, um, you know, we were not only uh, told to look for. You know, our topic today is what happened in Japan. You know, being mm -hmm. that there's an earthquake, we're we're staying alert and we're looking at it. But there aren't only going to be, you know, magnificent uh, natural signs that we are to look for. There's also signs such as in Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. where we see a beast rise up out of the sea. Right. Well, we know that's not a, a literal thing happening there. It's a, um, it's a, a one world political system arising upon the earth. Right. And that's also another sign that we are told to look for that's happening today as we speak. You, you always, you hear talk of it all the time. Uh, a new world order, a need for a world, a world order, a need for, you know, a better government to supply the needs, you know, supply uh, better needs to, um, or a better system of redistributing the wealth to mm -hmm. the world so there's no poor nations and things like that. But a sign like that, only someone with eyes to see and ears to hear is actually going to be able to see that. It's kind of a spiritual sign as sure. well. So I just mentioned that because those are just as important to look for as is an earthquake right so basically what you're saying is that these earthquakes are just kind of one one piece of the puzzle yeah and there's other things that we need to be watching for as well and i think these chapters that that you just mentioned here at least that we're reading from today uh matthew 24 mark 13 mm -hmm. luke 21 kind of gives you a list of it those does. different things that are, are going to be happening and then you know once you get into as you mentioned those are the beginning of sorrows then you go mm -hmm. to revelation um, which would be kind of the start of yeah. the tribulation after the beginning of sor sorrows uh, with the seals, the trumps, and the vials, and, and so forth. And so I, you mentioned revelation and earthquake at the mm -hmm. beginning of the seven trumps. That's correct. Are there any other places in revelation that you can think of um, that talks about earthquakes? Yeah, there are, there's a, there are a few places where it mentions earthquakes in that book. Um, the sixth seal, I believe it's uh, Revelation chapter 6, Somewhere in that somewhere in that chapter, it mentions uh, an earth uh, great earthquake happening, um, as well as uh, Revelation eleven thirteen mentions a great earthquake that causes one tenth of the city of Jerusalem to fall, mm -hmm. actually killing seven thousand people. Mm -hmm. uh, some believe those are the seven thousand fallen angels, but either or, there's a, there's a great earthquake that causes uh, you know a tenth of that city to fall there. In Revelation eleven nineteen. After the two witnesses arise, after being uh, laid out in the street for for a period of uh, three days, uh, there's a great earthquake. Revelation 16, verse 8, 18, um, is actually the great... Um, Revelation 16, verse 18, is actually the greatest earthquake that will have ever been upon the earth since mankind was created. Wow. And um, it actually mentions there... Let's just turn there. Revelation 16, verse 18... Because this is the greatest earthquake that we'll ever see if we live during this time, which um, I kind of think is uh, looking like we're getting close to that. It's when the seventh vial is poured out. It says, and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Verse 19, and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Verse 20, this is interesting. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Oh. So there we have uh, 
kind of an, a great earthquake kind of closing up the whole scene here. And um, figuratively, it's mentioned as Mystery Babylon, which could possibly be ac um, the actual physical location of where Jerusalem is, is today. And it mentions actually that that city will be split into three different parts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess you could take wild guesses at what kind of a magnitude earthquake would cause that. Um, I really don't have any idea. I mean, maybe you'd have to ask a scientist for that. Um, do you have any more questions? No, I don't. I think we covered a lot of good stuff today. Okay, well, we hope you enjoyed this program of staying alert. Um, this earthquake in Japan, I believe, is something that we should uh, take heed to. Maybe God's telling us something. Maybe he's telling us we're getting closer and closer to that time as we see um, not only these earthquakes happening at a rapid pace, but the uh, unrest among nations. It's kind of overall, I think we're seeing a picture of these birth pangs starting, uh, the beginnings of tribulation in the world. And what does that tell us? Well, that means that a false savior will appear soon or could appear soon to claim to bring all of the solutions to the world's problems. And that's what we need to be uh, be alert for. Um, because in Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21, Christ said that the main thing we should be looking for concerning the end times are false Christs and false prophets who shall deceive the entire world. And you know what? Our next Stay in Alert program will maybe kind of tie into that. We're going to talk about UFOs in the Bible. Are they biblical? Are they, fi are they fiction? Or what is the story? So don't miss that next program. We want to thank you for joining us. Until next time, God bless.